In this video, we will learn how to subtract instrumental broadening from XRD data using origin. When we shine X-rays on the crystal, the X-rays go into the crystal through diffraction and from the planes of the crystal, some X-rays are reflected to the detector that make a diffraction pattern. However, when the planes of the same crystal shrink, X-rays deviate from its original position and as a result, the whole XRD pattern shifts. While, when a defect occurs in the same crystal, X-rays reflect at different angles from each plane and cause a broadening in the XRD peak. Broadening caused by the sample may consist of many involved defects of the crystal, which mainly includes crystallite size, micro strain, solid solution and homogeneity, and temperature factors. We have already discussed the broadening due to the crystallite size in this video, while the micro strain in this video. However, Broadening of the XRD peak is not only due to the sample, but can also be due to the instrument. To get the actual broadening due to the sample, we will have to subtract the broadening caused by the instrument, which can be done with the help of measurement of some standards. Here we can see the magnitudes of contribution to the peak broadening from the instrument as well as from the sample. Ideally, it is to be like a delta function with negligible width and the broadening caused by the instrumental factors will be this much. When crystallite size will aid with this, the width increases further and so on if micro strain contribution is aided with these two. In the instrumental broadening, the two major components are the X-ray source and the X-ray machine optics. In the X-ray source, Broadening is caused by the size of the X-ray source, the wavelength widths of K alpha 1 and K alpha 2 lines, and the superposition of K alpha 1 and K alpha 2 peaks. While in the X-ray machine optics, some of the factors are these. However, in this video we will only discuss the broadening caused by the superposition of K alpha 1 and K alpha 2 peaks. When in the XRD peak, this kind of branch or shoulder occurs and which is consistent with all the peaks as well as becomes prominent with an increasing 2 theta values is actually due to the superposition of K alpha 1 and K alpha 2 peaks. In order to calculate only for K alpha 1, we will have to deconvolute the composite peak into 2 to calculate the exact parameters from the diffraction pattern. How to do this in origin? Let's open XRD data. This is the XRD data of LIF. Let me zoom each peak in order to check for the K alpha 1 and K alpha 2 convoluted peaks. This peak belongs to the K alpha 1, while this shoulder is due to K alpha 2 contribution. Similarly, in this one, we have the same convoluted peaks. This one as well. And finally here too. We see that the K alpha 2 contribution becomes prominent with increasing values of 2 theta. Let me focus on the third peak and will show you how the convoluted and deconvoluted peaks affect the accuracy of our calculations. So first, I will fit it in the convoluted form and derive the FWHM value and hence the crystallite size. Let us fit this convoluted peak. Go to analysis, peaks and baseline, multiple peak fit and open dialog. Go on with the Gaussian fitting. Double click to pick the peaks. Open the nonlinear fit. Click one iteration to see everything is good and then fit until converge. Now the fitting data have been generated and let us go to the data. In 
In non-linear fit peak 1, under the summary tab, we have the value of peak position is 65.49245 and FWHM is 0.2831. Let me go to the Excel file to write these values for some calculations. Now, let me delete this data and start with the deconvolution of the same composite peak. Here, I will have to note the positions of these two peaks as in fitting parameters, I will need these positions. Now go to analysis, peaks and baseline, multiple peak fit and open dialog. Go on with the Gaussian fitting, double click to pick the two peaks. Open non-linear fit. As both the peaks are so close to each other, their deconvolution is a bit tricky. Here we will have to put some restrictions on the peak positions is the peaks are very close and it might not fit them well. So fix the peak 1 and peak 2 positions. Now click few iterations to observe the fitting behavior. As the second peak starts growing, click fit until converge. Here I can see that the peak 1 fitting is not very perfect. So I will fix and decrease its width a little bit. I do few iterations and then fit until converge. Now let me release peak 1 position and perform the iterations. I see that fit has been improved. Now relax its width too. The fit is now reasonable. Click OK and go to the data. Here the position of peak has changed slightly. Let me copy the values to the Excel file. And here I see that the crystallite size has increased by more than 10 nanometer. So this way we can subtract the overlap caused by the KLPA2 peak or KLPA1 peak for accurate deduction of the parameters. Thanks for watching the video.